This tutorial is one of many instructional videos presented by the Olympus Industrial Equipment Group. This tutorial video will provide you with detailed instructions to perform layer thickness measurements on cross-section samples within the Olympus Stream Image Analysis software. The layer thickness solution is an add-in module for Stream Essentials and above. To begin, we, we need to have a captured image of a cross-section sample with open layers in the Olympus Stream software. For measurement and evaluation of the image, we will want to be within the Processing tab. Within the Material Solutions tool window, we will choose Layer Thickness to start that specific solution. Once the Layer Thickness window opens, it will start with the Image Source selection, the option to load settings, and the ability to skip the sample information section. At the top of the window we have instructions that will guide us through each screen and at the bottom we will have the workflow list of this solution. The image source selection can be from a new live image, the selected image already open within the software, a batch of images located within a system folder, or a batch of images you select within the optional Olympus Stream database. The ability to process multiple images as a batch will increase workflow and productivity, also allowing you to average data over a group of images associated with a single sample. Opening the settings at the start of this process will allow the utilization of standard values to increase repeatability in measurement results and also decrease the process time. Click the next arrow icon at the bottom to move to the sample information section. Within sample information, we have the ability to provide titles or names to the part or sample, provide a title for the group of images, give detailed comments for that group of images, and also provide detailed comments for each individual image being processed for this sample. Click the next arrow to move on to settings. Within settings, we have the ability to choose how the contours are to be defined. The choices are automatic definition, magic wand definition, or manual definition. Automatic definition is set to define the contours based on a difference in threshold value between the background and layer. The software will automatically determine this difference. Magic wand still utilizes a threshold evaluation of the layer, but will allow you to manually adjust the amount of threshold that is applied to where the selection is made. Manual definition allows you to manually place the points to define the contours for the selected layer. This is useful when you do not have enough threshold or contrast difference between the layer and the background. Select automatic for this demonstration as the sample image does have a contrast difference between the layer and the background. We also have the choice of layer type at the bottom. With an open layer type, you can measure layer structures that continue through the image. When you have a closed layer type, you can measure circular layer structures. In closed layer, the contour line's first point is automatically connected to its last point. Once you have the settings completed, you can click the next arrow to move to automatic. At the top of this window, several options with which we can specify details concerning the background can be found. Select the dark option if the image displays a dark layer in front of a bright background. Select the Bright option if the image displays a bright layer in front of a dark background, or we can let the software automatically determine the setting. For this image, select Automatic to allow the software to set the background selection. After setting the background selection, click on the next arrow to move to Define Borders. We can now define our borders based on the background contour selections we defined in the previous window. Click on Define Borders. Now simply select the first contour line you wish to define by clicking on it. After we select that line, the software will then allow us to place the marker point at each end of the contour line. We will place the first point to the left side, then the second point to the right side, marking our entire contour line. Since this line stands alone, we need to right-click to finish marking our points. It will then turn a selected contour line blue. Now we can select the next contour line to define our layer. Select the line at the bottom of the layer which we define the first contour. 
Once again, we will mark this contour line with a beginning and end point. Since this contour line was connected with the definition of the dark layer, we can also mark the contour line below with two points using the blue cross marks. Once we have completed the definition of the borders, we right click to finish. Click the next arrow to edit borders. Within edit borders, we can add more contours, move borders, delete borders, connect borders, split borders, and smooth borders. These functions allow you to provide touch-ups needed before taking your final measurements. Let's try the function for smoothing a border in this sample. Select Smooth Borders button, then simply click on the border we want to smooth out, and the desired amount will be applied. This function simply allows us to straighten out some of the effects of a jagged edge of a layer border to assist in placement of the measurement points. After we select the border, right-click to finish editing. Click the next arrow to go on to Define Layers. Within Define Layers, we need to add the borders to define our individual layers. Click on Add Layers button to begin. Next, we need to click on the top border to our first layer, then click on the bottom border. The software will automatically place a fiber line or midpoint in green for the selected layer. Next, we click on the top border for the second layer, which is the same border for the bottom of the first layer, then click on the bottom border for the second layer. Right click to finish defining layers. Now that we have both layers defined, we will see them in the list. Click on the next arrow to continue on to our image results. We can now see the individual measurement results of the two layers. We can select layer 2 here to display the yellow measurement lines for the second layer. We can also display all measurement lines at once by selecting the show all button. To select a different measurement type, click on the down arrow button. There are three types of measurements we can use for the layer, parallel, perpendicular, and shortest distance. The parallel is our default one and aligns the measurements parallel to each other along the layer. Perpendicular will align them perpendicular with the neutral fiber line in green, and shortest distance will only show the measurement lines with the shortest distance in the layer. If we were to use the Close Layer option, we would have another selection here for displaying the measurement lines to lie in a radially symmetrical pattern. If we leave the Display All Measurements selected here, it will carry over into our report. Click Next to move on to Results. Within Results, we will see the mean thickness value for all of our selected layers for this sample, and we have the ability to select to generate a report and a workbook. We will select both here and then click the next arrow. Since we selected to generate a report, this will now take us to the reporting window and will allow us to select either the default template or a user-defined template. We can also define the content of the report below. We will leave all of the default values selected here. Click the Finish button to complete the report and generate the workbook. Once the report generates, it will open within Microsoft Word. The first page shows the analysis summary. The second page shows the sample results. The third page will display the image and the individual layer measurements. The report can now be saved as a Word document locally or into the optional database. Going back to the stream software, we can also view the workbook that was generated. The first tab displays the summary. The second tab displays the sample results. The third tab displays the individual line measurements for both layers and the measurement statistics at the bottom. This workbook can be saved locally or within the database and can also be exported to Excel directly. In this instructional video, we have covered layer thickness measurement within the Olympus Stream image analysis software. We hope this video has been beneficial and we invite you to contact us directly with any questions.